So this is my 1923 JD, and I wanted to talk a little bit today about the, uh, the electronics. And so in 1922, Harley-Davidson came up with the, uh, the buzzer system. This was used from 1922 to 1925. Then in 1926, they went to the Model D generator and started using a regu regulator. So this, uh, this bike, uh, 1923, doesn't, doesn't have a regulator in it. It has a, a, a fuse panel here. There's two fuses. The right-hand one is for lights, and the left-hand one is for horn. And they're wired a little bit differently in that the horn will only work when the uh, key is turned on. When the key is turned off and removed is that the, the horn won't work, but the lights, the lights work all the time. The, the buzzer coil, this is called the manual switch buzzer coil. So the manual switch is the key. This is what the key looks like, a little 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 harmonic and uh, there's a cover that fits over this that, that has a has a uh, hole in it that for the that for access to the key and likewise there's a round cover that fits over the um, the fuse box and there's two coils here um, this one here is called I think it was called the series coil and there's actually two coils involved in this two, two separate two separate windings and over here this one is uh, called the manual switch buzzer coil so um, and you'll you notice that in the middle there that there is a there that there is a, a, a contact point and so when when this relay pulls in the the contact point is connected when they're both pulled in the uh, the connection opens up again so so um, and uh, 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 when I've observed it it buzzing and it buzzes when you turn the the key on so the uh, uh, um, the best I can tell the purpose of the buzzing was to give the rider an indication that the battery was healthy if the battery was dead it wouldn't it wouldn't buzz um, and uh, I don't know whether there's anything in this unit that has to deal with regulating uh, the charge to the battery. The, the manual does talk about that the, the, the battery has to be in the system to prevent too much voltage from going to the ignition system. So as you rev the engine up and the generator goes faster and it produces more voltage, if you leave the battery out, the voltage will go above 8 volts to the ignition system. Um, in terms of the battery with this system is that uh, you, you measure the voltage and it's usually like 6.3 volts and then you start the engine up and you measure the voltage and I was told that you should expect like two tenths of a volt higher. Well, I'm getting more like uh, it jumps up to around 7.5 volts with this. I was a little bit concerned about overcharging and so I um um, I've been paying attention to the water levels. This is just an interstate battery that, that I have in here. But I, I pay attention to the water levels and have gone about 200 miles. And, and uh, uh, the water did get down to the low mark and, and uh, the battery acid got down to low mark. And so I added a little bit of water there, but um, I'm concern, concerned about overcharging. Uh, so let me show you how the buzzer works. And so the, the key you, you put in and you, you push it in. Now, now down here in the electrical schematic, it shows that there are three connections that are being made at once. So there's, there's a connection that goes to the ignition system. There's a connection that goes to the generator. And, and it's the only feed out of the generator comes in here. And then there's a connection to the battery that goes in here. And so when you push this in, it connects all three of those. Now, if you look back behind it, you can see one of the one of the connectors there and there's one on the other side. I was a little bit curious about where the third one was. And I think, I believe what it is, is that there's a, there's a large, uh, basically a washer. It's not a washer, but it's, it looks like a washer. Uh, back here at the back that gets pushed in and, it, and it's the third connection that brings the three wires together So let me go ahead. I'm going to push it in and then you turn it to hold it. So, so Okay, so now you hear the buzzing sound and if you look you can actually see the, you see the arcing in there And so what it, uh, I think is going on at this point in time is that this this one here is being held all the way in And this one here is op opening and closing which is, is causing the buzzing now, when I start the engine up, the buzzing goes away. Um, so, not quite certain how that happens electronically. The, the key, you can continue to turn it around until it until it pops out, or you can or you can turn it backwards either either, either way. So, so anyway, 
that's the uh, uh, the manual switch buzzer coil and that's what I know about it um, um, I'm a little bit surprised that there's very little troubleshooting information on this. Now this bike here is 97 years old, approaching 100 years old, and the manual co switch buzzer coil still works perfectly. So the question is, what the heck was wrong with it? If it can work after all those years? Um, uh, obviously there, there must be some pros and cons, and if you know any cons to it and why they upgraded to another system, uh, I'd, I'd love to hear from you.